G'day, it's Robbie here again. Well, in the last video you would have seen the configuration of the little power spindle and DC electric motor, 775 motor. Uh, you would have seen the configuration basically being as it is here, except that the shack was further across this way. Now, I've modified it in line with what I said, plus I've done a couple of other things. Now, as you can see, here's the original chuck, and I've moved this all back, this section of the block, mounting plate aligns here, and the base goes across the full width as before, so I've chopped a piece out to get the chuck back and to clear, provide clearance for this section of the mounting plate. And once again, the mounting plate is just a piece of, you saw it before, it's just heavy U-channel with a motor mounting plate welded on, slow, standard gearing. So now we've got plenty of room for drills. We can get in quite well on the small diameter drills that we're going to be using. And as I said, the last, in the last video, we'll be going up to probably six mil maximum. So yeah, that should be enough, I think. Now the problem is that if you want to do radial drilling, because we're talking cross drilling here, if you want to go radial coming in this way, you can't get the cross light across far enough to do the radial drilling. So an easy way around that is rather than put the grinding attachment on the end of the 10 mil shaft, I've cut another Jacob's taper on it. Now this was Jacob's taper two for this for this particular drill chuck. And being a 10 mil shaft, that means that you can uh, machine a Jacob's taper one on it. You've got enough width there, diameter to do it. So I've machined a Jacob's taper one on the end of the shaft. And of course once I've moved the block across I've got a lot of shaft hanging out, sticking out, the pulley's right up against the block. And now I can radially, radially drill, go in, and I can also align it with the top slide and go in on an angle if I want to. So just get this, the power spindle parallel to the top slide, lock it down, and then change the angle on your top slide and you're good to go. So, all worked out extra good, all works great. Everything lines up, as I said, it's all repeatable. Everything lines up perfectly. Now, so you can see what I've done, all right? I haven't painted it yet. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, I don't know. Everything's pretty oily, so it probably doesn't need it really, but I might. Now on the motor, I've run the wires across and a couple of cable ties on the end of the slots just to hold that together. You have to make the direction of the motor switchable I did a video a while back showing how you can do that very simply and I'll show you what I've done to the power pack. Okay, here's the power pack and rather than put the switch for direction on the on the grinding drilling unit, it was going to take up too much space and it was going to interfere with the uh, readings on the top slide. So I've mounted it at the power source, I put it in a plastic box which I've glued onto the power pack, run the power pack wire out into the box, through the switch, back out, and away you go. So all your switching is done away from the machine. Electronics are all sealed. The power pack actually is rated at 4.7 amps. And under test conditions, I found that uh, for up to six mil drills, the unit was pulling the full amperage out of the power pack. The power pack actually does a little bit over 5 amps and at 6 amps it will go to 6 but at 6 it shuts down to stop any overload damage. So basically what I said about running it off a 1 amp power uh, pack isn't going to work because when this thing is idling, when this thing is just running, just spinning over not doing anything, it's pulling 1.1 amps in that little motor that 775 motor. So you're going to need a, a power pack which can put out at least, I'd say, uh, four 
to 10 amps to be useful, okay? So you're going to need a power supply that puts out 4 to 10 amps for just lightweight drilling. You can go bigger, but then you're going to probably cook the motor. The motor will probably overheat if you go too high, I think. So this just, just, just uh, switchable. And it just changes your directions dead easy. You can see it here. So, a piece of cake. So, once again, you can use for drilling. You can use this for cutting off steel shaft. I'll show you that in a minute. You can use it for grinding. You can do all sorts of stuff with this. And considering how cheap the kit is, <laughs> Well, yeah, it's pretty awesome, really. Paper on the end of it now. We'll make ourselves a little dead center, a tiny one. So yeah, you can use it as a tool post grinder or as a drill, a cross drill or a radial drill. How's that for needle sharp, eh? These are just some cheap little grindstones that you can buy in the hardware store. That's some sort of cadmium plated steel. So yeah, you can, as I said, you can grind dead centers you can sharpen drills, get the profile correct and then uniform and then just do the back relief after. Lots of uses with this little setup. Lots of uses. Okay, well I can't really show you much more than that. Um, as I said, they all use a 10mm shaft and the JT1 will fit beautifully onto a 10mm shaft at its, at its widest part of the taper. Once you go above JT1, Jacob's Taper 1, the, the taper is bigger than 10 mil at its, at its widest point. So you've got the choice of either using JT3 or 2 at this end and having a grind attachment at this end or you can put on, like I've done, put on a, a JT1 chuck. You get a JT1s at both ends and that way you can use the, the taper on the timbrel shaft to set up your top slide at the correct angle to machine the taper. Okay, you use it as, the, as a guy, as a reference. You just run your test indicator against it until you get the angle perfectly right. Now, there is a slight difference between all the Jacobs tape tapers. They're not exactly the same angle. There's a very small deviation as usual and uh, so yeah easy way use JT1 at both ends you do restrict yourself a bit on with the size of the uh, drill bits you can put in it or milling bits or whatever but most of your air tools will be 6 mil shank so if you want to use anything that goes on an air die grinder 6 mil it will take 6 mil on a JT1 so there you have it Okay, here's a view of the back side. You can see how I've cut out the, the section of the U-shaped beam to give the JT2 
jack clearance. And you would have to do the same with the JT3 as well. The width of the beam is up to you, depends on what you've got available. I use some scrap stuff I'm lying around, which is it's a hundred mil channel, okay, a hundred mil. So there you have it. It just drops on. You just take off the tool post mount, drop it on, and you're good to go. All you do is align your spindle longitudinally or crossways or an angle, whatever you want. And as I said, you can do it with the the unit loosening off the pull down or on the the top slide by loosening off the degree plate and moving the top slide so you can come in basically and drill in any direction drill grind cut off you name it this will do it okay well that's it and uh, i expect there'd be a few hobbyists out there model makers who could see this as being extremely beneficial to their to their hobby what they're doing and it's not a lot of money if you don't mind a little bit of work setting it up, it's the way to go. Okay, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Cheers.